Okay, here we are with um, number six. So this is part two of the review and it wants us to graph this function. Now, it is a cubic function. So you could, um, if you know what the regular points of a cubic function look like, it's negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And if I cube each of these, that would be positive 8, positive 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 8. Then if I apply the transformations to this, remember the um, reflections have to happen first and then the translations. You always multiply before you add or subtract. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect these and it's going to reflect over the x-axis, which means all the y values are going to change signs. Okay, so the new points after the reflection are going to be negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 1, 0. There's no such thing as negative 0, so it stays 0. 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 8. Then now we need to do the shifting. Now this is going to shift it to the left 8, which means I'm actually going to take my x values and minus 8 from them. Okay, so here the new points are going to become negative 2 minus 8 which is negative 10 nothing is happening to the y negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9 0 minus 8 is negative 8 1 minus 8 is negative 7 and 2 minus 8 is negative 6 and so then we're going to plot those new points here um, and as far as showing your work you can do the three different tables or you can explain what's happening. It's reflecting over the x-axis, which means the y values change. It's going left eight units, which means you're gonna take the x values and then minus eight, okay? So that's kind of showing your work as well, but I like to write the tables just so that I have everything mapped out. So this is the only one that I'm going to actually graph. So negative 10, and that would be 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. So negative 10 and negative 8 is going to be right here. Then negative 9 and negative 1. Then 0 and negative 8. Then negative 7 and 1. And then negative 6 and 10. And so then you have the image that looks like this. Now again, I'm trying to make it go through all the dots, but of course it's going to look all weird. Um, my math labs is going to draw it nice and perfect though, right? It's not going to have it looking crazy. So you would select the graph. Um, in the test, you select the graph that looks like this, but you do need to show your steps or your work on how to get there. Um, as far as um, in my math labs, you have to plot the five points and then use the tool to graph the function there. Now, number seven says graph the following function. And so now it's got a different basic function. Notice that the basic function here is a square. Okay, so y equals x squared. And there's three different things happening to it. So I'm going to have a bunch of tables, which is why I scooted it over as far left as I could. So for x squared, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If you square this, you get positive 4, positive 1, 0, 1, and positive 4. Now the first thing that's happening to it is that the y values are getting multiplied by 4. So if I take all of the y values and I multiply them by 4, I'm going to get 16, 4, 0, 4, and 16. Then if I start to um, do my translations, this means it's going to move um, to the left, or no, I'm sorry, minus means it's going to go to the right three, which means I'm going to add three to all of my x values. So then this will become positive one, positive two, three, four, and five. Y values are unaffected in this round. Then the last thing I get to do is shift it down three. And if I shift it down three, that means all the y values are going to have a minus three. So the x values will stay the same, and the y values will become 13, 1, 
negative 3, 1, and 13. And so then in the test, you could just select the one that has these points. Um, over here in the review, we have to actually plug this all in. So we get 1 and 13, which is here, 2 and 1, which is here, um, 3 and negative 3, which is there, 4 and 1, which is here, and then 5 and 13, which is there. And so you notice it's a skinny parabola, and that's because of that stretch multiplier of 4. This guy stretched it, so made it skinny. This guy moved it to the right, so instead of the parabola being here at 0, it's moved over to the right, and then it's also moved down 3. Okay? Now let's see another one. Um, here we go. Now the basic function is the square root of x. So we have y equals the square root of x. Now this one's different in the fact that the numbers that they pick. For a square root, you want to start with 0, and you can only plug in positive numbers in a square root. Negative numbers are going to give you imaginaries, and we can't graph imaginaries. Um, and then you want to pick perfect squares, like 1, 4, and 9. And so then uh, the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. Then you want to start doing your transformation. So the first thing you have to do is whatever is in front of the basic function. You have to do that first before you start doing the left, right, up, and down shifts. So that is always going to multiply your y value. So my y value this time is going to get multiplied by 6. And the x values are not changing in this round. Then I can deal with the plus 1, and that means that the whole thing is going to shift up 1, which means the y values are going to get, are going to add 1 to the y values. So this becomes 1, 7, 13, and 19. And so then that's the it. That's all I need to do with it. So I just need to figure out which one of these matches this information. Now I got chopped off, so I'm not sure which one is going to match, but let's go ahead and plot it. Um, I do need to go up to 19. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 19. And that's 9. So 0 and 1 would be right here. Um, 1 and 7 would be right here. 4 and 13 would be here. And then finally, 9 and 19 would be way up there. So it's doing this thing. Again, I never make it through all my points, but you get the idea. So it's going in that direction. Um, so it's definitely not this one, right? That's going more narrow down here. Um, so it's got to be one of these two. I can't tell what's going on here. It looks like this one is actually touching the 0, 0, whereas mine is not. It looks like it might be A, which is touching 0, 1. And I don't know what um, B looks like over here, but it does look like it's going in this direction, which means that one wouldn't be it as well. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. So now number 9 says, given the graph, y equals g of x in the figure, sketch the graph of each function and describe how it is obtained from the original graph. So we know that when you do minus x on the inside, this reflects over the y-axis. And so then that's going to be option D. And then what that means is that all the numbers here are going to change in x values. So x values will change signs. So if I mark some indicators, now this is really, really tiny. So I know this, that I have a point here in negative 2 and 0. And then I have a point here at 0 and 2. 
and then it's going downward like that and then I have a point at 1 and 2 and it's flat and then it's going in that direction right so what's gonna happen is if I list these points in a table because I like to do them in a table this is negative 2 for x 0 for y um, 0 for x negative 2 for y and then 1 for x and 2 for y now reflecting over the y-axis means all this is gonna go over here and all that's gonna go over there so the x values are gonna change signs which means for this one it's going to be positive 2 0 and negative 1 and the y values stay exactly the same so which one of these has these points let's see we have 2 and 0 and there's nothing here so it's not a 2 and 0 again nothing here 2 and 0 and again here so it's probably going to be D and let's draw so we have 2 and 0 we have 0 and negative 2 and then we have negative 1 and 2 So that means, oh, I'm missing a point here. No, I'm not. Oh, this is zero and positive two. I don't know why I put negative two. That was an error. So the y value should stay the same, which means I have two and zero, zero and positive two, and then negative one and positive two. Now that makes sense. This one's going downward this one's going here and then that one's going upward so you want to look for the graph that is doing this kind of motion okay now the next one the next one is minus two inside the basic function which means this one's gonna go to the right so that means that when I take my original points here for this one I'm going to moving to the right means the x values are going to add 2 so negative 2 plus 2 which is 0 0 plus 2 which is 2 and 1 plus 2 which is 3 the y values are not going to change so let's see which has this 0 0 not that one this one has 0 0 this one does not I don't know what D looks like but let's just check to see if this one is it so we've got the 0 0 we've got 2 and 2 but we don't have, well actually this is going by 10. Let me zoom that in real quick so you can see what's happening here. Here, the little boxes are not one, okay? Um, they're not one unit. This is one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, and you get to 10. So each one of these boxes is two units. So this is two, and there's a point there at two, two. And then in the middle here, between 2 and 4 would be 3, and there's a little point there. So I do have these points in this option. Um, luckily in the computer, you have a little magnifying glass that you can click on to make it get bigger. So there I can select um, that it is B, and then I have to say that that's supposed to have moved the graph to the right two units. Now C has a negative on the outside of the basic function. When a negative is on the outside, that means it reflects over the X axis. So over here on the next problem, I would select that it's going to reflect across the X axis. And then what that means as far as the original points is it means if it flips over this way all the y values are going to change signs so 0 and negative 0 is the same but this will become negative 2 and negative 2 my apologies for the plane I do live next to Randolph Air Force Base so that happens a lot um, okay so then now we have negative 2 and 0 that matches this one and it matches this one but not here I don't know what D looks like, but let's see if maybe it's one of these two. Then we have zero and negative two, so it's not that one. Zero and negative two, got it. And then one and negative two, and then one and negative two. So this one is the one that's going to match our graph. 
Okay, last one is a negative on the outside and a plus three. So we already know that the negative on the outside is going to make it reflect over the x-axis, but the plus three should make it go up three units. So it's actually going to be option D, which means I'm gonna have two tables here. Well, not necessarily, because I already did with the negative on the outside, right? So I already know what the first step looks like. Now I just have to take those from putting the negative, changing all the y values to negative, now I have to add three to the y values. So I get three, one, and one. And then let's see which, hopefully it's not D. Um, we get negative two and three, which is, remember these are two. So this is three and this is negative two. And it doesn't look like it hits right there. So it's not that one. Let's look at negative two and three. Again, it's not this one. Let's see here, negative two and three. That one does have the point. Let's see, zero and one. Yep, that one's got it. And then one and one. So this is two and the middle would be one and one. So C is going to be our graph. Now I did go over by a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here because we're running into 16 minutes. And I did kind of want to keep these as close to 15 minutes each per part.